Okay, the point of this video is to get you introduced to BGS or British Geological Survey maps. These maps are from are actual geological maps from different locations around the UK. Um, you're going to have to be able to use these and, and answer questions related to the geology on the map and link it to your geological knowledge. So what I want to do with this video is to get you familiar with what you can find on uh, one of these map, map extracts. Um, so, and then we'll sort of have more practice at this during the sort of next year. So what can you find on one of these extracts? Well, there's three things. We have the actual geological map. We have a cross section that's been drawn for you from going across um, part of the geological map. And then you also got this thing down here, it's just, which is a geological column. Now, this tells you the uh, rocks, where they occur, where the boundaries are, where the faults are. You'd be able to pick out um, folds and things like that, and nonconformities. Um, the, um, the cross section, obviously, as you see, very familiar with it already, it, it gives you a hint of the geological structure that you've got across um, the map. But this thing over here, the geological column, you've not come across before. And this is um, the sort of age relationships as well as the thickness of every layer. If you were to stack all of the map layers on this particular map on top of each other in the age relationships, this one's the youngest rock in the area. And this one down here is the oldest. And you can actually measure the thickness of various um, various different units on it. Um, it usually tells you the age of um, the units within the, the, the map as well. What else can you find on these um, extracts? Well, right at the top, it tells you the scale of the geological map. This one here is one centimetre on the map is equivalent to 25,000 on the ground. If we take two zeros off, then it's one centimetre, 250 metres. Most of the maps that you're going to come across use that particular scale. Not all of them, but most of them. Um, they also have a, a sort of a, a linear scale on here. It's all right. That's better. It's more um, precise. This, um, I think you can get um, a few more errors on it. So please ignore this all the time. Um, what else can you find on the map? You're going to have a key at the bottom. So this tells you what each of the various different symbols are. I'll explain what this is in a little while. Um, what else should you know? Well, north is always to the top of the map. Um, so um, you can orientate yourself that way. Um, you've got grid references. Um, so you could be asked to locate uh, a specific location with a six grid, six figure grid reference, or you could be looking at something within a particular square and they'll look, uh, quote four figures. So I hope you know from school that you read the horizontal before you read the vertical on grid references. Again, we'll have more practice of that when we back, get back into college. So what I'm going to go through next is I'm going to concentrate on features you can find on the geological map. I'll zoom in so you can have a look at the various different features you have on here and also explain some of these keys down at the bottom. Right, so this is a zoomed in section of the northern part of the geological map. And I want to point out um, the different types of boundaries, uh, what the colours mean, um, how we can infer um, about the height and the shape of the, the landscape, uh, where the igneous intrusions, all things like this. Um, at the moment, it's just an introduction. We're going to build up these skills as you do see more and more of these particular maps. OK, so the colours on the maps represent different rock formations and that's dominated by a particular rock type of a particular age. So the colours relate to the relative age of the rock. Now if you want to find the age you have to go across the general vertical column. So anything that's in this sort of green colour at the top relates to things which are in the upper Carboniferous period. Anything that's the blue and the purple 
and down here is in part of the lower carboniferous. So they're being grouped together like that. So um, you're used to black and white mats with various different layers, um, letters, sorry. This one here, um, you've got used different colours and each of the different colours, if I zoom in, has been given a different letter. So this light blue is the BLL. Uh, we know from over here that it's a below limestone, it's lower carboniferous in age. So there's lots of information on there. So anywhere where you've got light blue, you've got this particular limestone of that particular age. Um, the purple is another type of limestone. It's also lower, lower carboniferous in age, but it's a coral limestone rather than um, sort of deep, deepish water, quiet water limestone. Um, the light green rocks over here um, are all upper carboniferous. They're all sandstones and grits and shales. OK, so where you change rock type, um, where you find that change at the Earth's surface, we have a geological boundary. Now, on this map, we've been given two types of boundaries. We've got this dashed line and we've got this solid line that we can see around here. The solid line represents that we know that boundary is definitely there. The purple, um, sorry, the dashed line um, the boundary suggested it's there. So it might be a change in the sort of local landscape, change in vegetation, where we can infer things from. Um, other things that we can spot, um, these dip arrows all the way around tell you which way the rock is tilted um, and the numbers tell you how much they're tilted by. So infer boundary, definite boundary, dip direction and dip amount. Um, the other thing that you can see is the NOS map um, superimposed, um, well, underlaying the, the colour itself. So um, you can see where buildings are, quarries are. You can have a look at the sort of the height contours. Um, some maps will have the values on for the, the heights. Um, some places don't. You just have to look around. So this bit here, we've gone up a hill. Uh, I don't know which way it is. I haven't looked at it closely enough. I imagine this is the hill there. So it's going downhill. Um, they're quite evenly spaced. Whereas this bit up here, the contour lines are closer together, so suggesting this has got a steeper slope compared to this area down here. Um, so we can um, infer where geological boundaries are, we could get an idea of what the, whether, what the landscape is like, whether it's relatively flat, whether we've got a hill or a valley in there. And how the geological boundaries interact with the hillside, we get like a different shape. Uh, more of that later on. Um, the other thing that we can um, find on geological maps are igneous rocks. Now, they aren't recorded in the general vertical column. They're recorded elsewhere on um, the key. So these sort of purple, sorry, dark pink and the orange are igneous rocks. So looking at the map, we've got a lava flow here. We've got a vent. So that would have been a, a volcanic vent um, on the particular map. And then we've got possibly a sill on this here area there. Um, one last thing um, is on the key, we've got this thing over here, which is called the drift deposits. So this is any material that's been deposited since the last glaciation. So this is your unconsolidated stuff. Um, it's not solid rock. You could dig it away. And this stuff is lying on top of the solid bedrock. So... Anything that's blue and green on this particular map is solid bedrock. And then on the top of it, covering it, would be the superficial deposits. So we've got landslip material, we've got peat, we've got river deposits. And head here, for the geographers, that will be a solid fluxion um, deposit. So if we go um, to the top portion of the map up here, we can clearly see we've got two landslides. Um, and anywhere within this brown area, we've got a head deposit. Um, this bit here 
um, the yellow would suggest that this is an old river deposit. Um, so this could be like sands and gravels associated with the river. Um, geological, um, sorry, unconformities. Um, you can also find those on maps exactly the same way as you would uh, find it uh, on a uh, black and white map. Um, this purple uh, blue boundary, can you see it gets stopped just where my uh, fingertip is? So it's been truncated, it's been cut across by this green layer here. So the base of that green, the start of that green, is where we've got an unconformity. So this green is a lot younger compared to the purple and blue. And in fact, if I zoom out, we go over here, there's the boundary that I've just mentioned, and it's noted down as an unconformity on there. Um, other things that you can also find on maps are obviously faults. Um, Faults usually have the annotation of a really thick black line. So this thing here, uh, can you see a little cross mark? So at right angles to the thick black line, that represents a fault. Now in ca on this particular map, lots of the faults have actually got mineral veins are going across it. So this is what that Odan vein is, that's the name. The vein means that it's got lead um, or um, minerals along it, so things like galena. That little symbol there suggests that you've got an adit um, in that particular area.